Hi guys, uh, today we'll be discussing the electrostatic instrument. Uh, so we'll be looking at how this instrument can be uh, used for measurement of uh, voltages. Mm, so uh, from the name itself, you can understand uh, uh, this instrument works uh, on the principle of uh, static charge. Mm, so uh, so here we have a small diagram of uh, the electrostatic instrument. I mean the construction can change uh, Depending upon the I mean the construction of the instruments can change very little bit, but the basic uh, con uh, principle is that it uh, works on the uh, It uses a parallel plate variable capacitor so here on oh, the uh, main component that is used for this uh, measurement is, is a uh, parallel plate parallel plate variable capacitor now uh, why this is known as a variable capacitor is that the capacitance of this capacitor keeps changing uh, on uh, depending upon the position of this capacitor uh, position in the sense uh, you have two uh, plates over here you can see one is here and the other one is the second one over here so uh, one of these plates is fixed and the other one is movable and the movable plate will be connected to the pointer over here so uh, both of them uh, are attached parallelly but then uh, one is one is completely fixed which can which won't uh, move in any direction but the other one can be easily moved that is the construction and therefore uh, we know that uh, the capacitance the capacitance value depend upon uh, c is equal to sorry and the capacitance c is equal to epsilon uh, a by d or a by l whatever so here uh, this is the area uh, area in the sense overlapping area so the, the since there are t uh, it's a parallel plate capacitor i mean uh, all capacitors are parallel plates so here a corresponds to the overlapping area uh, over lapping area uh, and the D is actually the distance this is the distance so D is the distance between the parallel plates now the here D remains always constant but the overlapping area will change with respect to the theta so um, let's say if the there is a deflection then the corresponding overlapping area will not be the same I mean uh, if it moves to some particular degrees and therefore the if you look from the top you might observe that one of the vein uh, or one of the plate is in this form format and the second one is only overlapping in this much region so the overlapping region may differ with respect to the theta so a is a function of the theta or the deflection so you can write uh, the capacitance itself will be a function of theta because of this uh, a um, being a function of theta so you can write c of theta is equal to epsilon epsilon a of theta divided by d so this will be the uh, this is why we call this a variable capacitance now this works on the principle that let's say you connect a uh, uh, voltage let's say you connect a voltage v across these two plates what happens uh, this is positive this is negative so what happens uh, this becomes positively charged and this becomes negatively charged and therefore these two gets attracted right so uh, when they start getting attracted they'll uh, overlap each other they'll try to overlap each other 
and they'll uh, the capacitance will also increase the as the voltage increases so that is the basic principle in which this uh, instrument actually works now uh, the torque will be proportional to the uh, uh, the electrostatic force of attraction uh, which is again proportional to the uh, q square which is proportional to v square i guess q is equal to uh, c into v now uh, l let's look at the derivation uh, in this case in the uh, the torque equation how the torque equation comes up so now we know the current i i is equal to dq by dt and q is equal to c into v so that is d by dt of c into v now here uh, the voltage and the current uh, keeps uh, varying with respect to the theta uh, uh, voltage and the capacitance so uh, both are uh, uh, time uh, changing quantities so therefore you will have to take this as a product uh, differential of a product so you'll get it as uh, c dv by dt plus v dc by dt which is the product i mean this is the differential of a product uh, of two quantities first quantity into the differential of second plus second quantity into the differential of first now this will be the uh, current i now let's see what is the input energy input energy is in the sense the entire the supplied energy by the external uh, source or whichever quantity that you are measuring so the uh, input energy becomes input energy to the meter the input energy into the meter becomes uh, the voltage into current into dt uh, that is equal to uh now here uh i we have already got so you will get it as uh v into now dt gets cancelled out over here from this expression so v into i so v into the first expression is uh c into dv by dt c into dv by dt uh, DV, dt and dt gets cancelled so you will get it as v c dv plus then you have the second term so v into v becomes v square v square dc so this will be your total input energy into the meter now let's look at uh, what is the change in the stored energy let's say the meter already had some amount of energy uh, stored and then uh, what is the change with the supply of the new energy what is the change in the energy now uh, we know that the energy stored uh, in the capacitor can be written as half cv square so the change in, in the stored energy can be written as the change in the stored energy can be written as 1 by 2 into c plus dc into v plus dv the whole square so this will be the total energy minus the previously stored energy which is half cv square half cv square so from here uh, you can expand this expression and then you will have uh, half into c into c plus dc into v square plus 2v dv plus dv square minus half cv square now here you can see uh, the main stored energy which is there it will come up with this uh, half into c into v square which gets cancelled with this term then uh, you have half into uh, c into 2v dv which will come out as cv dv 
half into c into 2b dv and then half into c into dv square so this square terms uh, will uh, neglect out because dv is already very small and the square of dv becomes even more small so half into c into dv square will uh, just uh, neglect uh, similarly half into uh, v square uh, half into dc into v square uh, that is one term that that is the next term that you will get half into v square into dc and then half into dc into uh, 2 v dv dc and dv since these two quantities are very small we will neglect them out because uh, the, the product of these two terms will become even more smaller and then therefore we neglect them as well as uh, dc into dv square term also we will neglect out because these would be very small in comparison to the other terms so this is the final expression that you will get that is the change in the stored energy uh, so let's call this delta e or so whatever you want to call now uh, let's uh, connect these two terms the input energy and the change in the uh, change in the stored energy so the input energy the total supplied energy input energy should be equal to the change in the uh, stored energy plus uh, the mechanical work done now what is the mechanical work done here here the mechanical work uh, by uh, mechanical work we uh, what we uh, mean is that that the deflection in the angle theta now the this deflection in angle theta of the pointer is basically the mechanical work done or the torque that is supplied for uh, bringing out this deflection can be written as the mechanical work done so here we can substitute these values the input energy is given by uh, uh, vc dv here you can see what is the input energy vc dv plus v square dc yes plus v square dc is equal to you have cv dv plus half v square dc plus what is the mechanical work done that is the that is the deflecting torque that is applied into the uh, d theta this is the theta with which uh, the deflection has been produced so from here torque into d theta will be your uh, the mechanical work done so this, these two terms gets uh, cancelled out and then you will get it as uh, half this v square uh, dc minus half v square dc becomes half uh, v square dc is equal to the deflecting torque into d theta or you can write it as uh, td is equal to half uh, v square dc by d theta so this will be the uh, final expression for the deflecting torque a very simple derivation there is nothing much in this uh, now uh, in this instrument you can see uh, the controlling torque here is given by the spring so uh, again the uh, the controlling torque expression will come out by Hooke's law as will come out as uh, tc is equal to k into theta now when you equate this or uh, at equilibrium uh, we can find that td is equal to tc which turns out as uh, from here you can write it as theta tc there is k theta uh, we'll take the k into the other side so you will get it as half v square by k into dc by d theta so this will be the final expression for the deflection theta now here also uh, the uh, the square term will be uh, when you take average over the time this becomes 
uh, basically V RMS, V square RMS. So theta is proportional to V square RMS in this case. So that is the uh, uh, one of the observations that we can make. Also, uh, there is a component called DC by D theta because uh, the capacitance keeps changing. We already discussed this uh, factor. The capacitance of the uh, parallel plate variable capacitor keeps changing with respect to theta. That is why you have this extra term DC by D theta. So the final deflection theta is equal to half V square by K DC by D theta. Okay, then guys, uh, uh, with this, we'll finish off this uh, topic on electrostatic instrument uh, thank you for listening to the lecture